Good to have Brother Given back with us this morning. Amen. Brother Bob is here. Sister Diane is here. Good for all this good company back with us. It's an answer to prayer. Amen. Funny that I chose to talk about our new bodies this morning, coming right off of all of those brethren being sick and unable to be with us. That's what we're going to talk about this morning to open. Philippians chapter 3, verse 21 the Lord Jesus Christ shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Amen. We will be changed at the last trump, at the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye. We will be changed. Our vile bodies will be like his glorious body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 has a lot about the resurrection. So this change is talked about in verse 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon, and yet another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So we find here that there's different glories, which means we have this body now, we're going to have another body then. That's the comparison that he's making. The sun has a light and the moon has a light. They're just different kinds of light. We have this body now, we're going to get a new one then. They differ in glory. Amen. So it's like a seed. Also in 1 Corinthians, this is chapter 15, verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So this, our body is like a seed. When you die, it's going to be planted in the ground. We call it burial. You, you're buried six feet under the surface of the ground. But for what? Is your body going to be left there for eternity? Your body is planted so that when the resurrection of the dead comes, your new body will come up from where your old one was planted. That's the purpose of what's going on here. So this is a matter of source. So the first man is of the earth, earthy. We're made of dust. These bodies aren't meant to be eternal because they're from the earth. But the second man is the Lord from heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupts, right? That's the source of our new bodies. So you can count that that nature of our new body is going to be like the place it comes from. First right. John 3, 2 is the next point. It says, beloved, or yeah, beloved, that's verse 1. Now we are the sons of God, right now. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. That's a lot of absolutes. Yeah. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. No question in that, for sure. So now we are the sons of God. Then we're going to be the sons of God, only glorified. That's right. That's right. So this is not like God is going to take these bodies and flip a switch that makes it eternal. That's not what he's going to do. These, they're planted and then they're raised a new body with lots of changes instead of just this one thing that makes the whole thing fall together. Amen. <clears throat> so we will be changed, but this body will be changed. The fact that we are the sons of God will remain the same. Now we are the sons of God. So we see through a glass darkly now. That's, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But he will return and we will be like him for we will see him as he is and that new body will be like unto his glorious body and we'll see all of it in its fullness. So you can also think here, this is a matter of our conversation, our citizenship. Back to, first, or back to Philippians chapter three, it's the verse right before the text I already read. Our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So this, our citizenship is not of this earth. Our citizenship is in heaven, Amen. and that's where we're going. That's our objective. That's our source. That's where we look to for everything we need. Yeah. <clears throat> so now, our affections are set on things above. That's our exhortation that Paul gave us in First, or 2 Corinthians and then the prize of the high calling of God, that mark that we are pressing toward, will be obtained. 
because we set our affections on things above. So when salvation is culminated, we will see why we needed to set our affections on things above, because that's where we're going. Someone somewhere said, setting your affections on things above is learning the homeland. You want to be familiar with it before you get there. I think it was actually dad that said that. You're learning the homeland. Be familiar with it before you get there. Otherwise, it'll be an uncomfortable transition. <clears throat> so right on the heels of that, our new bodies will not be an inconvenient change of habitation. Like sometimes when you have to move from one house to another house, it takes you a while to get transitioned, then it's, it takes you a while to get used to. By setting our affections on things above, we will step right into our new bodies and be comfortable with the work we have to do in them. <clears throat> so an application of this concept is something that Taylor and Annie and I realized when we were at Camp Barnabas. At the, at the beginning of every week, the second day that you're there as a missionary, if you're a missionary, you're working with a person with disabilities one-on-one -on -one all week long. And on the second day you're there, they have camper arrival, which is every single camper that's going to be at camp that week will come to the front of everyone there. There's music playing. They'll have their names shouted into a microphone. So everyone knows who they are now. And they're very happy to be at camp. And you can see it. It's written all over their faces. They want to be here. And they love it. And everyone else is going crazy too. Everyone's jumping up and down, cheering and clapping because they're happy too. It's called camper arrival. I maybe I've said that already, but oh well. But there's a striking similarity between this and our entrance into heaven that we were, we were all thinking about. Because now those, those people have disabilities. They have mental handicaps. They have physical handicaps. Somehow, some way. That's why they're at Camp Barnabas. That's why we go to Camp Barnabas, is to take care of these people and to connect and relate to these people. But the next time their names are called, up in the sky, they're going to have a new body <laughs> without disabilities and without any handicaps. And the same goes for me and every one of you. The, we don't have any disabilities or handicaps like they do. That's why I'm able to go to Camp Barnabas and I'm able to help those kids. And I'm able to be their friend and I'm able to learn from them and teach them in my own capacity. But... Instead of their, the little stickers they have, their names on them, so whoever has the mic can see what their name is, it's going to be from the book of life that their names are going to be called. And they think they're excited at camp. What about when they're in heaven? <laughs> it's absolutely revolutionized the way I viewed camper arrival. It's like, this is like heaven for these campers. Except the next time it happens, they're going to have new bodies. And we're going to have new bodies that won't have handicaps, that won't have sicknesses like Brother Bob and Brother Given, Sister Diane, and anyone else because we're all vulnerable to that type of thing. We're still in the flesh. We're going to have new bodies that won't be an issue. Sickness won't be an issue. But past sickness, death is dead in eternity. When we get there, our names are in the book of life. That name is called, we have a new body, we have eternal life, to be forever with the Lord. We have, we'll have new lungs that won't get tired from singing. We all have that problem. We love to sing. And after, after so much, we just can't do it anymore. But that won't be an issue with our new bodies. Amen. So this is a call to consider our conversation. As we open the day today, remember where we come from and where we're going. Because that is heaven. The second man is the Lord from heaven. He's the one that's in us. He's the one that gives us strength to do what we need. And that's our end goal as well. So consider where we come from. We are on our way to an order in which death is dead. And that is conducive for encouragement. So let's open this morning. And Sister June will have our, our class. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this blessed day that you've given us. We thank you for the brethren you've restored as an answer to prayer. We pray that you would give them strength for today, that they'd be able to sit through the meetings comfortably and benefit from what is said. We pray that you would bless all those who are beginning to speak. We pray that you would bless our day, bless our considerations as we set our affections on things above. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.